example of violin creates sound waves at a particular frequency. A, B, C, D, E, F, G don't have any black notes in between them. So, so the human ear can hear sounds that Now it turns out that the frequency of the sound wave depends only on the source that creates it. If for example a violin creates sound waves at a particular frequency, those sound waves will stay that frequency until they run out of energy or get absorbed by something. If the source vibrates back and forth for 200 times a second, then that means that the wave will have 200 complete waveforms or 200 complete wavelengths every second. And of course, when we're talking about sound or any wave, that means that it travels at 200 hertz. Remember, one hertz is one whole wavelength per second. So sound waves tend to have frequencies in the neighborhood of a few hundred hertz. So the frequency of the sound wave does not change. It doesn't matter whether you take the sound and you put it from air into water or from water back into air, or if you bounce it off a wall, it'll always have the same frequency. Now it turns out that because we can sense sound with our ears, we can in fact tell the difference between different frequencies of sound, and these manifest as different pitches. So high pitches, for example, have higher frequencies than low pitches. So a high pitch has, more, has a much higher frequency than a low pitch. And it turns out that the difference between these two frequencies is about a factor of two. So musical notes with a fixed pitch also have a fixed frequency. That means that if you play a long open note on a violin or sing a long sustained note, la, then that note will have the same frequency. The frequency of a note that's not changing will not change. It turns out that Western civilizations, such as our own, have established a series of tones that relate to pitch. And of course, if you've ever learned any music, this will probably start to sound familiar. So the different tones in music are assigned different letters. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Of course, these represent the different tones in a musical scale. So there are notes in between these that are assigned names like F sharp or B flat. So if we have C and D, then in between C and D, we'll have C sharp or D flat. So we can see that this system lets us describe many different frequencies of note, but without using numbers. So what happens when we get past G? We can see that over here that we'll go back to the same note. Because all the different notes have different frequencies, we can write them down. If we have a starting note, say middle C, which is around la, then that will have a frequency of around 262 hertz. And as we can see, as we get higher up, and we move up the scale, la, 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 and so on, we'll get to higher and higher frequencies. One interesting thing to notice here is that the distance between two notes over here is a larger number of hertz than the distance between two notes over here. And it turns out that this is because of how a musical scale is defined. But we'll get onto that a little bit later. It's also interesting to notice that even accounting for that, not all of these notes on the scale are the same distance apart. In particular, E and F are closer together than you'd expect them to be and B and C are closer together than you would expect them to be. If you look at these notes on a piano keyboard, then you'll notice that B and C and E and F don't have any black notes in between them. So this means that rather than being a whole tone apart, they're only half a tone apart or a semitone. That's more musical theory, so we won't go too much into it. Now, musical notes can have the same name if they are separated by an octave. So an octave is an interval going from here to here. If we're musicians, then we'll know that la and la are the same note. They're one octave apart. So an octave corresponds to a pitch having exactly double the frequency. So that means if the lower note is 200 hertz, then the upper note will be double that, 400 hertz. And an octave above that will be double 400, so 800 hertz. And this is why, as we move up the scale, the musical notes, they get different distances apart. So if we look at the note called concert A, for example, which has been standardized at 440 hertz, then if we go up one octave from concert A, we'll have an A with a frequency of 880 hertz. So one octave corresponds to a doubling or a halving in frequency if we're going down. 
Now it turns out that we can't hear all sounds. We can hear musical notes like C and A and D, but we stop hearing sound if the frequency is too large or too small. So the human ear can hear sounds that have a frequency from between about 20 hertz to about 20 kilohertz, that is 20,000 hertz. But hearing range isn't the same for everyone. So some people might have a different hearing range that might start at 30 or 40 hertz and go up to 14 or 15 kilohertz. The other thing is that over time, the hearing range of people tends to decrease. So that means that when you're young, you might be able to hear 20 kilohertz, but as you get older, then you'll only be able to hear up to 19 kilohertz and then 18 kilohertz and so on. So sound with frequency that's too low to be heard, so less than about 20 hertz, is called infrasound and we tend to need rather large speakers to create it. So these waves can be felt. It's possible to feel physical vibrations on your skin or in your body. In particular, if they're at exactly the right frequency, they can cause organs inside your body to vibrate and might make you feel sick. On the other end of the scale, we have ultrasound. Now ultrasound is sound with frequencies too high to be heard. So that's above a frequency of about 20 kilohertz and we can use ultrasound to pass through objects and bounce off other objects. And so this means that we can use them for medical imaging, like we can see in this ultrasound photograph. We can use it in sonar, which is a way of navigating using sound waves. Or we can use it in dog whistles, because dogs are able to hear these frequencies and we are not. So that's the end of the theory. Uh, we've learned about various different frequencies of sound and what they sound like, as well as some of the different relations between different musical notes. So let's go on to some questions.